Many of us exclaimed, What an order! I can't go through with it. Do not be discouraged. No one among us has been able to maintain anything like perfect adherence to these principles. We are not saints. The point is that we are willing to grow along spiritual lines. The principles we have set down are guides to progress. We claim spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. A related problem caused a split of another kind. One of the Cleveland members of the Akron group, Clarence Snyder, began to realize that as long as the self-help group was tied to the Oxford group, it could never hope to assimilate Catholics, Jews, or agnostics. The majority of the fellows that were going down to the Oxford group with me were Catholics. A Catholic in those days, they were not permitted by their church to belong to such a group as the Oxford movement. So something had to be done. I said, all we need is a 12-step program and the four absolutes, and anyone can live with that. So I went down to Akron the next week and made the announcement that this is the last time the Cleveland contingent will be down here as a group. We are starting our own group in Cleveland, Ohio, at 2345 Stillman Road, Cleveland Heights. And this is not going to be an Oxford group. This is going to be known as Alcoholics Anonymous. We're taking the name from the book, and only alcoholics and their families are welcome. matter of those four absolutes we call them, the only yardsticks we had in the early days, I think they still hold good. And I still think that they can be extremely helpful. I have found at times that questions arise and uh, I want to do the right thing, but the answers are not obvious. Uh, you don't know what the right thing is. But almost always, if you check it into it carefully, by the yardsticks of absolute honesty, purity, and selflessness, and love, and whatever your decision is, checks up pretty well with those four, your answer can't be very far out of the way. If, however, you do that, as I have done at times, and still am not too satisfied with the answer. I usually consult some friend whose judgment perhaps I think in this particular case would be very much better than mine. But usually you can do it yourself without bothering your friends about your own personal decision uh, in overcoming the first step. Can't quite get honest enough to admit that uh, John Barleycorn really uh, has bested us. Matter of absolute purity uh, is somewhat like it. It's purity of ideas and purity of motives and what have you. Non-selfishness includes those things that I've just been talking about, not the dime of the two bits to the bump, but actually giving of yourself. And as you well know, the absolute love is probably a big word incorporating all three with a little bit more along with it. I think that that is a very difficult thing to have absolute love. I, I don't think any of us will ever get it. But that doesn't mean that we can't try to get it. It was extremely difficult for me, and I feel that I never have been very successful at it. It's very difficult for me to love my fellow man. I didn't dislike it, but I didn't.
didn't love him. Uh, unless there was some special reason he was just, uh, uh, I was just indifferent toward him. I wouldn't do him any harm. I, I would be willing to give him a little lift if uh, it didn't require too much effort. I never would injure him at all. But to love him, I just couldn't do it for a long time. And I think that I overcame it to some extent when I was forced to do it. Because I was either going to love this bird or not to attempt to be helpful to him, or I would probably get drunk. You could say, well, uh, Lord, you were just, uh, that's just a manifestation of selfishness. Which is quite correct. I was selfish to the extent of not wanting Smith hurt. So to keep from getting Smith hurt, I, I would attempt to go through the motions of being helpful to this other fellow. You can debate it uh, any way you want to, but uh, the fact still remains for the average individual, absolute love is a thing that he will never acquire. I suspect there are a few people who do. I think maybe I know some that come pretty close to it. But I think I could count them on the fingers of one hand. I don't say that uh, in a disparaging manner, because I have some wonderful friends. I'm talking about it uh, in the uh, final aspect, and uh, particularly as it... Uh, applies to AA. I don't think we do anything well uh, very much in this world unless we practice it. And I don't believe we do AA work too well unless we practice it. March 9th, March 28th, April 8th, May 15th, June 7th, August 26, August 29, September 12, September 17, September 20th, and October 27th. Again, this is the 24-hour a day book that was published in 1948. Here is where the Four Absolutes came from. It came from a book called The Principles of Jesus, published in 1902 by Robert E. Speer. And this book was basically the essence of the Sermon on the Mount from the Bible. And... Basically, the book was written, The Principles of Jesus, and he believes that the Four Absolutes was the essence of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, 1 through 7, 29.
Here we have the Cleveland way of using the four absolutes. Honesty, purity, unselfishness, and love. They had four questions attached to it. Now this was done in Cleveland, Ohio. And for honesty, they had the question, is it true or is it false? Question for purity, is it right or is it wrong? Question for unselfishness, how will this affect the other fellow? And question for love, is it ugly or is it beautiful? Here we have the Oxford group, and this is how they use the four absolutes. One, as a way to take inventory of our past to see where we fell short and what ways so we can learn what areas of our life need to be worked on. Two, during meditation or while being inspired or guided by our inner voice as a way to differentiate between God thoughts and human thoughts. And three, as a standard of living, moment by moment. 